speed, scalability, and decentralization. It's considered the blockchain trilemma. A project either has one, two, or none of them at all. It can never have all three, at least what most people believe. Solana is a project similar to Ethereum. It allows smart contracts and it operates consensus through proof of stake as well as proof of history. But is it able to defeat the blockchain trilemma? Well, in today's KuCoin DigiDive, we're gonna go ahead and talk about Solana. We're gonna talk about the Sol token and what you can do on Solana. If you guys would like to go ahead and get started trading with this coin, there's a link in the description below that will give you 20% off trading fees. All right, so what is Solana? Solana is similar to Ethereum. It allows smart contracts, it allows NFTs, it allows DeFi, everything you know and love on Ethereum or Avalanche or Phantom, any of the EVM chains, but with transaction fees that are fractions of a cent and it can process over 100,000 transactions per second. And I know you're saying like, how in the world is that possible? I mean, every other time, any other chain, they can't just do it. Is it running everything on a computer? Well, let me go ahead and show you a current list of their current validators. I'll shrink my face. So as you guys can see here, there's over 1700 validators. And scrolling through the different validators, you can see that in the top 25, 34% of the network is being operated by 25 different validators. And the rest of the chain is operating under all these other 1700 and about 50 different validators. Now, of course, this doesn't factor in that some of these validators could be owned by the same person or all these different validators in general just being owned by the same person, but this is the general distribution overall. If we go on to the main page of Solana, they have a lot of pretty interesting things. Um, transactions per cost is less than a fraction of a fraction of a penny, which is really cheap. And of course they have over 1700 validator nodes and the current transactions per second as we're speaking is around 1000. There's actually a lot of projects that are built on Solana as well. You got step in, you got swim, you got form function, you got Orca, Saver, Serum, all kinds of different dApps. And again, like I mentioned to you, it's basically everything that you know and love on Ethereum, Avalanche, Phantom, but on Solana and then some. There's a lot of projects being built on Solana. We're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of projects. Go and get into the architecture of Solana. How does this work? It actually operates off of a mix of proof of stake as well as proof of history. The proof of stake with the Sol token is being used to secure the network. It uses proof of history by being able to process transactions horizontally. So instead of having, oh, transaction one, transaction two, transaction three, it can actually process transaction one, two, and three at the same time. So instead of having to wait till the next one to go through, which is normally what an EVM chain does, it goes by the next transaction or the next block, Solana actually processes them all at a horizontal state. So here's a brief overview, or at least a video graphic you guys can see that kind of displays exactly how this works. So say for example, I'm putting in transaction one, transaction two, transaction three. Each of those transactions happen at a certain time. And when you put them through and organize them, all those three different times will create the whole transaction time. So one way you can explain this is like 60 minutes in an hour. Each of those 60 minutes, they happen at a certain interval, like minute one, minute two, minute three, minute four. What Solana is saying is it would technically process all those 60 minutes at once and put a timestamp on each of them. And then when you go to confirm the state, if you go and see the time hash for each of those transactions, they would make that full entire hour. So as you can see here, this is the current state. So say this is the transaction hash. Say this is the block height number. And if you break it down, it had three transactions in it. All these happened at a certain time, but they were able to execute at the same time based on the proof of history model. You also have different verifiers that can go back and say, yeah, this transaction happened here, this happened here. So this can be validated back on the blockchain. So the TLDR is all the data and all the transactions are time stamped into a sequence and at any given time, the transactions that have their own timestamp can be put together to complete the whole entire block or at least that transaction hash in order to verify the state of the chain. Whereas normally what would have to happen is transaction one,
then transaction two, transaction three, all three transactions happen at once using proof of history with Solana and each getting their own timestamp. This is basically how horizontal scaling is executed. So the main difference between Solana and Ethereum and other blockchains is that it's able to process transactions at a faster rate due to this proof of history consensus. And of course, the coding language. On Solana, they use Rust instead of Solidity. Solidity is a different coding language from Rust. I wanna go ahead and show you guys the breakdown of this Solana token. You can see here 25% went to the founders, 37% went to the investors, and 38% were pre-mined for rewards and airdrops. So in theory, this is a pretty centralized coin. And we can go ahead and go over the supply schedule as well. This is the supply curve. You can see there are the founders, the seed sale, the founding sale. A lot of these tokens are being unlocked, like as we speak. As you can see here, this is the token unlocking starting in 2021. So over time, you do have this supply that's being sold off as these tokens are unlocked being the early investors and the early VCs got in at cheaper prices. Also, one other thing to note with the inflation schedule, as you guys can see here, the goal of the long-term inflation rate after 15 years is a 1.5%. So if there's a million tokens, its goal is at the end of that year, it will have about 1.015 million tokens because that would be a 1.5% inflation rate. And here's an overview of the staking yields as well. It looks like the annual staking yield will be dropping around that percentage, the 1.5%. Of course, the staking yield is your inflation. Now, Solana does burn transaction fees. So each of the transaction fees actually go to burn the sole token. But bear in mind, the transaction fees are fractions of fractions of a fraction of a penny. So they're very economical and very cheap. Now, being we're in a bear market, runway is super important to talk about. Solana is extremely well funded. It had a lot of investors and this was back in the first raise with Solana. They raised 314 million, 314 million dollars to develop a faster blockchain. This was in June 9th, 2021. Solana is very well funded. They also have the tokens that they have on their balance sheet. So there are cash reserves, they have tokens on the balance sheet and they have a bunch of different investors. Sam at FTX or Alameda Research, he's also a major investor in Solana. So overall, what are my thoughts on the Solana project in general? I believe it's an interesting approach what they're trying to do with proof of history, but I do have some concerns with the centralization and several times that the chain has went down. This is mainly due to the hardware that's operating the chain. The hardware they're using is basically as good as it gets in class and it still has issues. The reason is in order to become a validator, you have to have this beefy hardware in order to validate the network. So if I wanted to validate the network with my computer or run a validator node, I would be unable to. It calls for extremely heavy hardware. Now in the future, of course, time will tell. We'll see what happens. Technology is usually deflationary. Maybe there will be better hardware in the future, but it's just concerning that in order to run a validator node, with Solana, you do have to have some extremely hefty hardware, which adds to the centralization of the project in general. Now, as for the DeFi and NFT ecosystem is massive. There is a lot of action going on on the Solana chain. And I hear NFTs are extremely fun over there. Not financial advice, of course. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this KuCoin DigiDi. Let's go ahead and hit you guys with that wisdom one-liner. Proverbs chapter 14, verses 10. Each heart knows its own bitterness and no one else can share its joy. You may not know what someone's going through, but maybe they're going through something tough. If they're going through something hard, make sure you guys give them some help. I'm sure you'd want it too. If you guys would like to get started trading with this coin, links in the description below. Tell me what your thoughts are on the Solana token. Is it too centralized? Is it achieving the blockchain trilemma? Is it a good coin? Express your thoughts. And if you want to see some of our previous videos, there's a link here, 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 and like there.